Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the Grad Cracker webinar featuring our good friends at WSP. So WSP advertises their degree apprenticeships, placement and graduate positions on Grad Cracker and have been doing so for more than the last five years. They also sponsor the Grad Cracker Toolkit, so you really should check out their hub to find out more. So let's start with introducing everybody and talking about what SWSP does in more detail. So firstly, my good friend Kerry. Christian, welcome to the webinar. Hi, Christian's, just, Christian's just joined you. Nice to meet you. Um, <laughs> we're just going to go and speak to Kerry first, Christian, about WSP and your role, please, Kerry. Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, so I'm Kerry Snedden, Graduate Recruitment Manager for WSP. Um, in terms of who WSP are, we're an international design engineering company. Uh, we have over 7,000 staff in the UK and across the globe we've got 54,000 uh, and we call all of our people change makers because obviously that is very much what we do. Um, we've got technical experts um, and strategic advisors um, and that includes engineers, technicians, transport planners, scientists, architects, surveyors, environmental specialists, um, as well as design, program and construction management professionals. So we've got everybody here um, and we aim to nurture sustainable societies, connect communities and build a better tomorrow. Um, our experts offer a broad range of services. Uh, we have four strategic business units, so transport and infrastructure. Um, one of our key projects probably you all know about is High Speed 2. Um, and we're also very heavily involved in Curzon Street. I could go on forever with our projects, but obviously we've got limited time, so I won't. Um, then property and buildings, um, a few uh, projects that you might recognise that we've worked on um, is the Shard, uh, 22 Bishopsgate and also the Burj Khalifa, which I believe one of our graduates was heavily involved in. Um, and we also have water, energy and industry. So uh, we're very big on things like Galloper Wind Farm. And we've also had teams who've been involved in a relocation of a river. So we do lots of uh, different things here. And we also have planning and advisory. Um, so that's a little bit about WSP. So I'll hand you over back to Carla. Above all, you're just lovely people. Yes. As, as, as well as all these skills say, just lovely people. Um, so Kerry just mentioned a lot of the projects there, which are highlighted on the Hub on Grad Cracker as well. So go and take a look. There's some fantastic things that they've been doing. Um, and obviously we'll speak to the grads about those projects as well. Um, so Kerry, you mentioned like the different um, divisions at WSP. Do you recruit degree apprentices and um, placements and graduate op graduate positions into all, all of those? Uh, yeah, so mm. I personally don't deal with the degree apprenticeships, but we do recruit um, engineers and uh, scientists, etc., and surveyors um, mm. into uh, all of those disciplines that I mentioned, Carla. Mm. Um, we also re recruit graduates as well as placements. So we are looking for 260 graduates this year which obviously we've filled a lot of opportunities um, and we're also looking for 100 placements as well as 100 uh, apprentices which is a mixture of uh, you know degree and uh, lower level um, apprenticeships as well um, and um, we you know we, we generally want people who've got engineering scientists data driven backgrounds which is obviously uh, why we've worked with Greg Cracker for so long because uh, yeah. it's the best place to uh, advertise and share what we do with students um, so um, and we also have a scholar program so anybody that goes uh, comes to us to do a summer placement there's also the opportunity of us uh, sponsoring them throughout school uh, university uh, with with our scholar program so lots of great opportunities uh, and I wholeheartedly uh, agree with you Carla it is a, a, a really really friendly place to work um, everybody's so approachable everybody wants to help um, and no matter how high up people are uh, you find that they will go out of the way definitely you know to, to support our early careers professionals as well yeah. perfect I mean, Kerry just mentioned about all of the opportunities there. So there are literally hundreds of placements, hundreds of graduate opportunities, and then hundreds, obviously, of your apprenticeships as well at mixed level. And so, and Kerry wants to hear from you, STEM students. So make sure you watch this webinar, get enthused, and apply to the positions on Grad Cracker today. So thank you very much, Kerry, for that introduction, my love. And um, we're going to go on now and meet the graduates. And um, so. 
who all found the roles on Grad Cracker, so the massive advocates of Grad Cracker, which is really, really positive and makes me just very, very happy. And um, so basically about where you went to university and what you studied. So Maria, you're top of my screen, so we'll start with you. Hiya, um, I went to the University of Leeds and I did civil and structural engineering. And I finished last summer, yeah. Perfect, oh, a nice northern feel. Thank you very much, Maria. Neve, on to you. Hi, uh, um, I'm Neve. I studied chemical engineering at the University of Manchester and I also graduated uh, June 2021. Perfect. Thank you very much, Neve. Harpreet? I studied chemical engineering at the University of Birmingham. I actually graduated a couple of years ago. It was the summer of 2020. Perfect. Mixed disciplines so far, which is a really good sign as well. And Christian, last but not least, uh, yeah, so I studied civil and structural engineering at the University of Sheffield, and I also graduated in the summer of 2020. Super, thank you very much. So we'll hear about the graduate stories a little bit later on and about all the different projects that they've been working on as well. Um, but for now, we're going to do a bit of a round robin of the room and just ask about your key facts about WSP. Some of them I did not have a clue about, so I'm looking forward to sharing those with you. Um, Maria, can we start with you? Yeah, uh, my fact is that WSP stands for Williams Sale Partnership, and anyone you ask at WSP will probably not know that. No, we I didn't know that. <laughs> Everybody was shaking their heads like, nope, didn't know that one. Thank you very much, Maria. Neve. Um, there are 43 UK offices. Perfect. And me and Jess have been to two, three of them? Yes, two, I think. There's lots more that we can visit. Kerry, you need to yeah. invite us. Um, Harpreet, on to you. Um, so I guess if you're going to be strict, this might not count as a fact. It might be more of an opinion, but WSP has a very flexible work environment where it's it's um, it's everyone's very friendly and it's not if you have a need to work from home some days, it, that's, uh, that can be very easily accommodate, accommodated. Brilliant. I love that. I, I, that. That can be a fact for me. I'm not very strict for my facts. As long as you can see it on a live webinar, I couldn't care less. So thank you very much for that, Harpreet. Um, Christian, have you, did you get a key fact? Uh, yeah, so it's not so much a fact as well, but mine's um, that WSP has a really positive health and safety initiative called Zero Harm, um, which has got a heavy focus here as well. So going out on site in an office as well, there's a real emphasis on keeping everyone safe, looking out for each other here. Super. Yeah, it's such a positive culture there as well. So thank you very much for that. And um, Kerry, I'm going to swing back to you now. So you mentioned a little bit before about the opportunities that you've got on offer. And um, if you did have something that you want to expand on there that we could share with the viewers um, and also timelines. So when should students, obviously now, the answer is now, now, now. Yeah. But have you got any, <laughs> Kerry's like, yes. And um, what are the deadlines? You know, what's um, when you're holding assessment centres, what's all that look like? Sure. Uh, so we're just going through the final shortlisting at the moment. Um, uh, we are open for the next couple of weeks, so the end of February. However, if, if, if we do find that we're getting volume, more volume of the applications, we may actually close uh, some prior to then. So it is important to get your application in as quickly as possible. Um, it's not a long-winded process. There are a few uh, questions for um, graduates to answer, uh, just so we can get a feel for what they're looking for. Um, We've got opportunities, as I say, we filled obviously quite a few already, um, but we are looking for um, people for highways, uh, bridge engineering, uh, transport planning, um, the broad range of everything that we do. And we do list what we're looking for. We will start to maybe separate some of those adverts out as well. Um, we, we don't hold assessment centres for all our positions, but if, say, for instance, we've, we've got a lot of positions in one area, we will absolutely do an assessment because it's, it's just, just brings about efficiency and it saves candidates waiting around for longer than they need to. Um, so as our assessment centres are taking place at the moment. So we've got a couple of weeks um, throughout February um, and March until we actually finish the recruitment. Um, and for the placements, we are going to do the first round of recruitment. So we'll, we will close again for applications at the end of February. The volume there, uh, we have received a lot of applications to date. So again, if you are interested, please do get your application in. Yeah. Um, 
if we need to do another round of recruitment for the placements, because as you know, um, sometimes we, you know, we'll have a request for 100 and that could increase to 120. Yep. Um, but, you know, it is important if you are interested that you do apply. It won't take you that long. You submit a short application. Uh, along with your CV, we don't tend to screen on CVs, so it is important, uh, you know, that you do tell us uh, about you and your desires in your application. If you succeed uh, after that stage, you'll then be invited to do a behavioural assessment. So it's an online assessment. Um, it's a psychometric test, but it isn't like your standard psychometrics. It's all about your behaviours. So there's no looking at shapes or, or anything like that. And there's a standard verbal reasoning test. Um, if you're successful after that stage, you'll then be invited to attend an assessment, which at the moment are virtual. Um, it's not a daunting experience having delivered lots of assessments during my career it definitely isn't um it's a relatively short assessments where candidates uh, get together for half an hour to discuss a, a subject um they then do a short presentation and then they go on to interviews um and we aim to get back to all candidates within a two-week time frame so in terms of our placement opportunities, they, they will all be interviews, some of them where we can. We will go back to face to face, um, but we are still doing virtual and face to face for interviews. But we've left our assessments virtual this year um, just because we, we there were so many restrictions before Christmas. It was just easier uh, to do it this way. Perfect. I can't imagine any experience with you, Kerry, being daunting. <laughs> and I was just going to say, you know, if you are interested, all of our vacancies are on our hub page and grab cracker. Um, yeah. And that, you know, uh, should be where you go to uh, look and apply. Perfect. Can I ask, sorry, interrupting. Kerry, would you, I've just actually just been to Leeds virtually and we were uh, talking to some students there about you know the application process and someone actually asked me about assessment centers and how to prepare so what advice would you give for any students that are you know maybe applying for the graduate opportunity invited to the assessment center i know i'm putting you on the spot here but it was just because i was just literally talking talking about with some lead students about the preparation side of things so, you know is there any advice that you would give there on how could they prepare to make sure they're going to be successful when going into that situation yeah yeah, I mean, obviously, um, you know, before you go for any assessment or interview, it's, it's understanding what the organisation does and, and what you want to get out of it as well. I think everybody yeah. thinks, don't they, that an assessment centre is just for us to interview and view candidates, yeah. but it's a two way process, you know this is going to be a place of employment you want to know what it's like what it feels like what the culture's like mm -hmm. um so do your homework that that's a top tip for me um believe it or not um we do review every single application we get some excellent applications and we get some really poor ones um mm -hmm. we appreciate that graduates do multiple applications and I, I still, you know, I still find it surprising that I can be looking through applications and they're talking about another employer and not WSP. Mm, yeah. So, you know, make sure that you do check your application, make mm. sure you, you bring in to the fore anything you've done in terms of charity work, you know, what, what's going to tell us about you as an individual. Um, before you come to the assessment centre, make sure that you, you know, because all of the interviews that generally people do at assessments are a mixture of strengths uh, and competency based interviews. So always have a few answers up your sleeve. Um, the top ones that come to mind are those in relation to collaboration, teamwork, um, you know, what makes you an ideal fit for this organization. So it's knowing what the values of that organization are. Um, yeah. And also, you know, it's not just about what we're saying on, on our website, but I, I love it when students tell us things that we don't know. And it's kind of, wow, I didn't yeah. know that. And it's just about making sure you, you know, you, you try and, you know, as I say, the, these things can be daunting, but it's just about making sure that you can put your point across in an assessment without shouting over anybody else. And if there's anybody not coming to the fore, try to make sure that you are bringing them forward and considering those as well, because that will really stand you in, in, in good light. Yeah, 
Perfect. Yeah, Perfect bit brilliant. of advice. We're definitely going to use that as a <laughs> <laughs> that's, gonna get, that's, that's gonna get cut out. <laughs> I'll note down the time. <laughs> Thanks, Kerry. Um, I'm gonna hand over to Jess. We're gonna um, um, right. switch to the grads. Yeah, so Neve, I'm gonna start with you. Um, so if you could just tell us a bit about your experience so far and yeah, what life is like for you on the graduate program. Yeah, of course. So um I started in September. Um, I work in the London office in um, building services. Um, so yeah, I've started. I started in September, so I've only done I think under six months of the graduate yeah. program so far. But it's been so far so good. Yeah. Um, in terms of like the application process, I felt like it was. Again, you were saying like graduates send so many off, um, mm. but I found that when I was focusing more on each individual application rather than sending off 25 that were like subpar it really helped um and I think what's important to note as well is that you know often the employer that you are a good fit for will hire you so um in terms of like working in the office I feel like everyone is very sociable atmosphere again everyone's very helpful um and it's good to know that kind of they can see that in prospective um, applicants, I think, as well. So I think that's a huge part of like the hiring process. So if yeah. you're, um, I think, you know, everybody does engineering is um, is obviously very mathematically capable and stuff like that. But I think probably it's good in um, applications to show your soft skills as well. Mm, definitely. It's something that we talk about a lot, um, especially when I'm doing my presentations to students that, you know, those kind of key competency skills sometimes are almost just as important because it gives the employer a good foundation of you know, where your abilities are and, mm. you know, gives you an indication of, you know, what you could be in the future as well. Um, yeah. Neve, just, just to kind of go back slightly. So you started in September. Tell us a bit mm-hmm. about the experience so far so um what the onboarding process has been like and for anyone who doesn't know what that means it's almost a recruitment term really onboarding isn't it so yeah. Yeah, how has the induction been and you know tell us a bit about the teams you've been working in and have you been working on a certain project or anything yet um yeah so I so in onboarding in terms of like there's obviously a two-year um graduate program so throughout the two years there are different um modules that you need to complete yeah. um, throughout but I think what's really important is, is it's not purely that like you do have it at the heart that like you have a job you're doing actual um, relevant stuff towards projects rather than um, a lot of like e-learning and stuff which I know like s- some other grad schemes are kind of more focused towards mm-hmm. it is very practical um, and yeah no I've been involved in quite a lot of projects so far um, the biggest one was probably when I just started, which was um, um, like Museum and Cultural Centre, which was abroad, um, which was really interesting, actually. Um, and yeah, I've, I've really enjoyed the work so far, to be honest. It's Brilliant. Really very practical. Good stuff. Sounds interesting. We'll come back to you about the projects a bit later on and find out a bit more um, about that in more detail. So, Maria, I'll come to you next. If you could just tell us a bit about your experiences so far with WSP. Um, so I joined in September as well. Yep. Um, I work in the Newcastle office in development infrastructure, which is basically like the civils involved in like highways, really. Yeah. Um, I found the onboarding process really quite like simple. I had a couple of calls with my line managers and the people on the team before I started. So okay. it was nice to like actually get to know people who I was going to work with before I started work, which made it yep. a lot easier to join. Good. Yep. I've, I've really enjoyed it so far. Everyone's really nice. Really oh, good. And then, so I'm guessing are you. I'm guessing you're at home. So, are you going into the Newcastle office? Have you met any of you of the team yet? How's that working for you? Yeah. So, apart from when we weren't allowed in, um, yeah. I generally go in like once or twice a week. Um, yeah. yeah, it's quite a trek into the office for me. But yeah, I, I, I like going into the office because you can see loads of people from different teams as well, which is nice. Yeah. Sure. And then talking about um, in terms of, have you been? physically um on site anywhere yet or not yet how was that going yeah I have yeah um it was for a ministry of defense project uh, okay. so it's really like strict I was pretty scared to be honest um <laughs> a lot of like security checks and stuff right um 
but yeah, I can't really say anything about it because it's confidential. Oh, I was going to delve. I was like, oh, I forgot we, we used to the no comments on these webinars. Yeah. Aren't we just, just kind of, I was just asking, I think, Maria, did you have a buddy there then? Is there anybody specifically that you can go to if you've got any questions, like kind of like peer on peer? How does that work? Yeah, so uh, I had a buddy when I started. I mean, I still have her now, but um, uh, yeah, so if I had any questions before I started, I had her email and Skype so I could call her and talk to her if she was free. Yeah, yeah it, it was handy because I did have a lot of questions. <laughs> what what sort of things, if it's, if it's obviously if it's not personal, but what sort of things were you asking or unsure mm -hmm. of? Because I'm guessing a lot of people watching this webinar would, would have similar, you know, thoughts and questions that they would want answered. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was mainly concerned about the dress code, to be honest. Yeah, I get um, that. Yeah, what how the computers work, because we have laptops that we take in instead right. of like having it's like a hot desk system. So yeah. I've never dealt with that before. So I had questions about that. Um, yeah, I mean, that's all I can think of on the spot. Yeah, yeah. but at least she was there for you to answer these questions. Yeah, yeah. It's, it really it saves a couple of worries, doesn't it, before you start? And so yeah. it's a good reflection of WSP as well. You know, you feel mm -hmm. comfortable, she can ask those questions. You know, I always mm -hmm. have a bit of a mantra when I'm doing presentations. No questions is a silly question, you know, yeah. you know, ask away. So it's good that you felt comfortable enough to do that. Um, and you've got a good response, which is great. Um, so, um, Happy, I'll come to you next. Um, similar question. Just tell us a bit about your role and your experiences so far. So, um, I actually work in pretty much the same department as Neve. So, um, uh, which is the uh, the public health department in building services. That's essentially. So, our job is basically to. So, building services is essentially essentially what it says on the tin it's putting the electricity the electricity it's putting the ventilation it's putting the water pipes and things into into buildings anything that any kind of something in the building that the people need to use is probably our job and public health in particular is basically a fancy way of saying the people who do who provide the water so, so that includes like like fire fire sprinklers that includes um uh, water that comes out of the sinks uh, the, the toilets uh, hot water cold water things like that and and drainage as well and um and so definitely wsp is a sort of company where you get thrown into it very quickly you don't there's not there's no i remember when i was applying for lots of different jobs i spent a whole year applying um there was a lot of places where there was some kind of some kind of like training course that last there where you have like two months of intensive training before you actually started the job so sometimes that was paid most of the time it wasn't um but with wsp you the the learnings is, is extremely practical you get thrown into it straight away and it's essentially um for example the my my team leader even said to me that it, uh, he doesn't tell us everything or he doesn't actually tell us very much in the beginning because he knows we're just going to forget it he just lets us yeah. learn for ourselves and then as uh, as we go when we have questions we ask about it and and then we we, we actually will actually remember it because we're doing it ourselves yeah i think good. that's such a good way to learn as well though because you know i'm conscious of doing that at grad cracker like first week like all oh, this is all information <laughs> you're just so busy just getting getting used to just knowing people's names aren't you? you just think whoa this is too much let's just rewind a little bit so i really like that way of learning so are you and neve in the same office and are you two in the same room no i'm looking yeah. at the eyes just so, uh, <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a very big room <laughs> but yeah some of the webinars that i do it's like are you two in the same room it's like yeah the next to each other oh, okay and <laughs> um, we're still so, in the Sorry, is Kristen, are you in the same room then? No, no I'm in Manchester. I'm a different office. Oh, sorry, you did say that, didn't you? <laughs> looking at the lights. I'm looking, looking at the lights. <laughs> you know. um, do you do rotations then as part of your, your graduate programme, Harpreet? Is that is that part of it? Um, so I think with WSP, I remember hearing somewhere that other companies in the same area as WSP do rotations, but I don't think... WSP does. I think with WSP, it's a more informal sort of. We just okay, like we just very casually get put on a certain project, and and so maybe someone someone will come along and say, "Oh, do you want to work on this project?" Oh, is, oh, you think it'd be good if you work on that project? It's very yeah. informal in that sense. I think um, I was told the other day that in terms of like within the disciplines, it's very much up to the individual. So if you oh, if you decide that you want to say do some electric or mechanical it's like kind of up up to you to ask yeah. I think personally I would like to get good at one thing before I try yeah um, yeah 
but I was told that it's like very much an option yeah I think it'd be nice working on different projects as well just, just rather than going on a different rotation right this is what you're going to experience you can learn this thoroughly before I move on to another one is is chartership something that any of you are thinking about moving into or yeah yeah so obviously you need to do different projects to get all your accreditations for the chartership as well yeah, yeah. perfect thanks sorry Jess I just jumped in on you then no, it's no worries. Um, so another question I was going to ask as well is um, about, you know, your kind of experiences in terms of being, again, the balance between on site, you know, working in the office. How does that work? And do you get to see a lot of the projects that you're working on in hand? And how does that work? And that's the same question to you, Haparit. Um, So I don't know if this is the same for all graduates I think there's I think it depends very much on the role that you get at WSP mm. but in my department um, both me and Neve have gone to a uh, site quite a few times and we've seen we've been on building sites and um, as long as um, as long as you filled out certain safety forms you can and you're and you're accompanied um, at all times you can you can essentially walk around the building site as long as you they give the company gives you four PPE and everything that's yeah. personal personal protective equipment um hard hat hard boots stuff like that and um we're also asked to do a a test as well which is provided by an external provider I've just booked mine today coincidentally okay. oh, and wow. um that once you pass that you get a card which allows you to go, potentially go on site by yourself and so you get that card, you have to stay with, um, I think it's called like a CSCS card or something. Yes, and to, yeah. So um, once you get that, then you can go on site um, by yourself, as I think. But obviously, because with, when you're still a grad, chances are you'll be going with somebody else because yeah. you're probably not going to know what you're doing anyway on site. But but um, obviously, considering the you're probably, you're, if, if you're going to get a job at WSP, you're probably going to be here a few years. At that yeah. point, aren't, you're going to, eventually you're going to get to the point where you're going to be going to site by yourself probably quite often maybe even a very short notice and and you're going to need at that point obviously you're going to need to be able to have the documents to have to go by yourself yeah, yeah. sure it seems as though you've got a bit of the running theme and christina sorry i haven't come to you yet i will i promise <laughs> but the running theme already it's quite practical isn't it you know you, you both you know all of you have used that word already and i, I personally for me if i was looking to apply to wsp that's be something that would attract me you know like that kind of hands-on you know being able to go out see it and you know have the flexibility as well which is great um christine i'm going to come to you sorry finally um tell me a bit about your role and what you what you've been up to yeah, sure. Um, so I'm a bridge engineer um, in the CBG, which is Civil Bridge and Ground Department based in Manchester. Um, and our team is spread over Manchester, Wrexham and Birmingham. So I sort of chat to people across all those offices um, as part of my role. Um, I'm in a very small team of like six, I think, with like a fellow graduate, associate engineer, um, senior engineers. So it's a big mix of people you can chat to and part of a much bigger team as well that you can chat to in the office and everyone's in at least two, three days a week. I'm in every day because I love it in the office. Um, so it's just great to chat to people there. Um, the projects that I work on um, are mostly network rail related. So we have a project called CAFA, which is the Civil uh, civil Assessment Framework Agreement, I think, um, which is basically a huge amount of bridges up and down the country, specifically London Northwest, which is what we work on, um, which is bridges that are, could be up to like 200 years old, that are like brickwork, masonry arches, two relatively modern ones that are just station foot bridges, which are just simple metallic structures. Um, yeah. So my work is basically getting loads of information from like archive drawings, desk studies, mm -hmm. to sort of pull it all together and just sort of get as much information for those bridges as possible. And if people are going on site, it's preparing all the information so that they're safe on site and they have it all available to them. So it's making sure that people are safe, um, yeah. cover the information and also getting all the information on the bridges as well. This oh. is something that really interests me because I used to live in a railway cottage which was by a bridge. Don't start, Kerry. Um, she must be laughing at me. So how does it actually work? So I used to live on the East Coast Main Line. And do you mm -hmm. just like literally, I know you said that you're northwest. So do you just literally go, go up the railway track and think, right, OK, so this is a bridge that needs looking at. Or do you get reports in from the general public? So, you know, this one might need some maintenance. How does the information get fed back to you? Yeah, so, um, so my experience so far is we have separate work packages. So right. we might have a work package that has a group of bridges in, I don't know, Liverpool or Manchester yeah. or spread around. Um, and Network Rail has these documents that they'll assemble every like two to six years. 
um, mm. and they'll go and they have to just basically maintain it. If it's a bridge that's particularly derelict, they might do it every two years. If it's a bridge that's relatively new and in good condition, maybe about four or five years. So they've mm. got these regular intervals that they inspect the bridges. And then what we do is we sort of create these reports beforehand, so like what do we need to look at, what are the defects, what we're going to check for, and then we'll go on, on site, which of them myself, and you sort of look at all these defects and think, oh, that needs looking at, that needs looking at. And if you see something particularly bad, they'll have like an urgent report saying, we need to address this very, very soon. Otherwise, it's just going through year after year. I bet, I'm guessing you have to get other agencies involved as well, won't you? Because the, some of the bridges might be listed and things like that. So you can only do so much structural work to them. Yeah, I've, I've not worked on any listed bridges yet, but I'm, I'm oh. sure you do as you go along. Um, Watch this space. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> list of bridges see. to be continued. <laughs> yeah. I think that's a bit that I would find interesting as well. That's, you know, looking yeah. back at the you know old stuff, looking at the old designs, how they were built, and then you know to this new stuff that's been built and the the differences between them. Yeah, I mean, yeah. absolutely. I think a bridge earlier today, I looked at the drawings are from like eighteen eighty five, and you have to go yeah, through and wow. try and read the old handwriting and figure out what yeah. it's like, and you measure it all in feet and inches, convert it. So you have to do that with the old drawings, which is quite fun. Oh, yeah. I, I still measure in feet and inches. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Kerry too. Where else called Kerry? Where do you get those drawings from? Um, I mean, for me, someone just sends me a file with all the oh, files in and get it. But I'd imagine they've all been scanned over years and years and stored in databases yeah. to get to us. Interesting. Um, well, Kristen, whilst I'm still with you, we'll talk a bit about projects because that's going to be my next question. If you could mm -hmm. tell us um, maybe a bit about the project that you're working on now, so maybe a certain bridge or even maybe your favourite projects that you've experienced so far. Yeah, definitely. So like I say, mostly my whole time from September has been working on this project called CAFA, which is just a huge encompassing like hundreds and hundreds of bridges up and down the country. Yeah. So probably about one one or two bridges a week I'll go through and create reports for and do desk studies so I probably looked at 20 bridges so far maybe in just that short amount of time yeah. wide variety um the best one recently there's these arches that are right next to where I work actually um and I got to go out on site I got to like inspect it myself I got together with a site leader as an assistant and you get to like chip away at the brickwork it's measure it all you get to go up in like the thing called a MUP, so mobile elevated working platform, basically a cherry picker. You go up in a cherry picker and you go onto the arch, oh, you get to yeah. look at it all and um, see all the base changes. You wear your PPE as well. So going out on site for me has been really insightful um, and helpful. Again, a lot of responsibility mm. early on, isn't there? You know, in, in terms of delivering results, you know, it, it, I can imagine that it's it's quite uh, a lot of work, a lot of pressure. Um, it can be. Um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say necessarily pressure because there's a huge amount of support. Um, just not just within my small team, but there's everyone from the junior level right up to the head of the bridge department where I work has yeah. been helpful and give you like nuggets of information whenever you ask for it and um, unsolicited as well. They'll help you out and give as much information as you can. So there's a lot to do, but there's never too much pressure. Oh, that's always good. Helped. Fantastic. And it's great that there is that support. You know, you've got that network around you, which is fantastic. Um, OK, Neve, I'll come to you next. Um, Favourite project that you've worked on? Again, I know you've only had a short time, but anything that you maybe have experienced doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, work project, but anything outside of um, the, the programme so far? Uh, yeah, of course. You mentioned earlier um, 22 Bishop's Gate, which was... Um, yeah obviously it's very well known um the tallest building in london no the tallest building in london but not the highest building in london i think because there's like a dip um so uh, it's, it's actually the exactly. taller than the shard but not higher than the shard um, that's how that works so thanks for explaining that <laughs> um yeah um i got to go on site and i actually got to stand on the roof oh wow, wow. yeah um, I know it was it was very a lot safer than I thought there was huge walls around but no there was a lovely view so that oh. was definitely my um my favorite um, but why, why, why were you there then Neve? uh we were inspecting pipes <laughs> um so yeah in terms of like pressure in them yeah um, but that was definitely probably the the most high profile anyway um one that I've been um involved with and there's a lot to learn I feel like when you um when there's a project like that if you can do that kind of you can do anything you know yeah, so it's yeah, really definitely. really interesting yeah and did the pipes need replacing or are the pipes okay no they're all good <laughs> good <laughs> glad to hear it Go on. <laughs> maria same question about projects 
so the main project I've been working on is the Ministry of Defence one, which I can't talk can't about. Tell me <laughs> Think of another <laughs> one. <laughs> I've been doing like lots of little projects because um, yeah, the good thing about um, developing infrastructure is there's not like massive projects so it's yeah. lots of little ones so I get a lot of variation. I do a lot of like road design, uh, cycle scheme design, like car park design yeah. and a lot of drainage as well so it's all very varied which is good for my like CPD so yeah. Yeah, but cycle designs are big at the moment, aren't they? Because I think every city is trying to be more cycle safe, especially yeah. with the new or impending been... launch. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. it's changed a lot. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So have you been working on a specific um, location in Maria for the cycle schemes or are you just your general projects? Uh, yeah, there's a, quite a big one going on in Middlesbrough, uh, Linthorpe yeah. Road. So that's what I'm working on. It's just a, just a high, high street sort of. It's like uh, about... I want to say it's six kilometres. Um, yeah, just yeah, putting cycle lanes in, moving the pavements, just making room for it, configuring it. Yeah. Quite fun. Marie, is there anything that you've experienced so far in your role that has maybe surprised you or excited you to think, oh, wow, I didn't realise I would kind of experience that so early on or have the responsibility mm -hmm. of something like that so early on? Yeah, I didn't realise I'd be doing so much design work so soon. Um, I'm not like nervous about it or anything because I know it gets checked, but it is though quite a, like a lot of responsibility straight away, knowing that I have to be like responsible for people's safety. Like, I yeah. don't want to cause any like car crashes or anything like that. But yeah, you get a lot of responsibility quite fast. Good. Yeah. And again, sorry. I was just going to say, how, how does it work, Marie? So, say you've done you've done a design, for example, mm -hmm. and obviously that gets that gets signed off. So then, who would speak to the to the the, the men and women who are actually putting those designs um, into into practice? So, who would be who would be that link? Would that uh, be WSP? My, yeah. Um, well, I'm involved in it sometimes, and my line manager. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, so we often have meetings with clients where you have to explain why your design is the way that it is yeah but yeah it's very hands-on like I have to explain myself quite often yeah to the client. yeah would your clients be like the councils and our national highways or yeah, yeah the council uh, Middlesbrough council is the one we're working with at oh, the minute no. so that's presentation skills then isn't it and explaining why you put your proposals together I bet that's yeah. quite intimidating uh well everyone's just really nice like everyone yeah. I've worked with even people at the council have been really like calm and friendly so it's not it's like talking to Kerry time. every day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cool. It sounds, it sounds like there's so much opportunities there. Yeah. And have we come back to you, favourite project that you've worked on so far? Um, it's kind of a bit hard to choose because I've worked on so many. Um, I probably haven't worked on any that are really high profile yet. I know there are some really high profile ones other people are working on. Okay. Um, um, the one I'm working on right now is um, is a residential development called Kibrook Park, which is somewhere in Lewisham, I think. Um, and essentially we are, it's, it's basically like a group of, a group of um, flats and um, some of them, some of them are flats. Some of them are apartments with like various amounts of bedrooms. For one bedroom, two bedrooms, three bedrooms. Some of them are masonettes, which basically means a flat with two floors, the ground floor and first floor. Um, and um, so, I've basically been, I've been assigned the the job of coordinating the the PH, so also public health, the water, the water supply, the domestic cold water, hot water, all those things. So. I've, I've basically been assigned to to do that and I've been my I've been drawing on so the there's a lot of haggling with the with like other engineering companies because you have to work with um, architects for development which is which is external and there can there can be a bit of to and forth with them because for example they sent with this project they sent through site plans but there's a lot of errors on the site plan and so I've, there's been a lot of just having to make assumptions for things that are obviously wrong because for example there'll be a bedroom but then they'll you'll see you'll see stairs going up and then when you look on the on the next floor there's no stairs and someone where did the uh, stairs go uh, <laughs> so yeah. um so there's other sort of obvious errors like that and you just got to try and 
you, 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 it's, it's a bit of a balance because you don't want yeah. to bother the architect too much because you know he probably has a lot on his plate as well and you don't want to yeah. like burn any bridges but at the same time you do need to sort of give them a nudge now and again and say and like um, I've been in contact with the architect about um, the, the height of the plant room which is what essentially the amount of space that I have to put my tanks in my water tanks mm -hmm. so um, uh, I think there's there's um, obviously there's other people we have to be in touch with like clients and that as a graduate yeah. I don't generally you don't really talk to clients yourself that's normally the higher ups who do that but there's a lot of training programs we've been going through that tell us about how we would go about talking to clients and things we'd have to bear in mind preparing us for when eventually we do we are put face to face with the clients mm -hmm. um as i was going to say one other project i've been working on is um is, is but just to show sort of the the variation of different projects that we can be given is um uh 40 leadenhall street which is a, a big skyscraper a bit like uh, 22 bishops gate okay. so 40 leadenhall street is um there's a I think, it's, I think it's a commercial building so, so filled with offices and things and then there's a big I think there's a big restaurant on the top floor I spent a long time design, sort of designing the piping for that restaurant and um, and I remember it had a very sort of it had a very eccentric design where in the middle of the bar there's like there's it's shaped like almost like an oak tree and then you hide that wow. it goes up into the ceiling like that Wow. And then, and then you hide. We are going to somehow hide the pipes inside that the trunk of the tree. So you get some some funny designs. And oh, well, it's, okay. yeah, but there's some interior <laughs> designer here from this crazy idea, and you're all sat there with your head in hands, thinking, "Oh, because <laughs> it's, it's up. It's up to the architects at the end of the day, and then we just we just have to sort of like reason with them. So because the architect has a vision, and then yeah. the the PH engineer basically has to say, "Well." Can you at Reality. least give us some room to put the pipes in, please? <laughs> so, um, so yeah. So, so basically, the projects can be really varied. Sometimes it's a commercial building. Sometimes it's a skyscraper. Sometimes it's just a small set of like uh, residential houses and things. It's yeah. really varied. It must be exciting because every project like that then's got different challenges. You know, you've got different things to be worrying about. Different, you know, again, pH and all this stuff, which you're thinking, right? Does that fit that design? And is that going to work? And different pressures yeah uh, this would be that interior designer who said right okay so i want a castle in the middle of my living room to have with a lot of fireworks it. coming outside the top this would be this this kid would be doing this and um, you've just kind of led me on how pretty yeah. perfectly to my next question about training and development so you mentioned there about the training program and to be able to speak to clients and and things like that so just go through with us a bit about what what that might look like and um, if have you have you started it yet or is that something you're going to start in the future so the actual uh, the training about talking to clients is very sort of basic at the moment I'm assuming yeah. it will probably get more advanced as we as we go on so far it's just been a couple of presentations we've been given it's yeah. very very early stages still um, in terms of training the we've had we had a, a graduate week which um, for us unfortunately it was all done it had, to, it had to be done virtually because of COVID, for, because of COVID perhaps next year it will be I, I heard that in previous years it was done the they, I heard from colleagues that they, who did it a few years ago that they booked a hotel in Birmingham or something and went yes. up there for a couple of days. Yeah. I don't know if they'll do that this year. Obviously, it depends on on COVID. I don't know what the, the plans are, but um, but yeah, but we we all have a, a week of uh, graduate training where we it's not a full week, but but it, during that week we have a um a number of sessions booked on each day, which uh, where we tune into the team's call and we're basically told about welcome to WSP, here's what you can expect, here's um, some, some preparatory advice for like dealing for client training and things like that. That I think much more, all that, that the training in, in that sense is quite sort of general. However, the real, really, the training that really is much more, the was much more uh, like in-depth and, and helpful for me was uh, the training which was given by my own my own team especially um especially the team leader who has, who holds um like like training sessions every every other friday with me and neve where we, where we basically go basically go through the precepts of of uh, public health what we need to know and go through like the regulations and there's like the, the design process the stages of the state because for example i think it's called 
I can't remember, I think it's called Reba stages or something, or stages of designing a building, stage one, two, three, four, five. We normally work on stages two, three, four. He was telling us about all the details of what's involved in each, each design stage of the building. Um, and especially the, the as, as well as those formal training sessions, there's just essentially every day as a grad is training yeah. because you're yeah. working on for projects. You, you, can't, you always have someone to ask if, um, if uh, you need help on something, if you're stuck on something, and if, if there's loads of people that you can approach anytime. So in that sense, like, um, every moment at WSP is training, really. Yeah, and I suppose it's like double edged, isn't it? It's training that's like factored in. So you know your soft skills and things like that, but it is on the job. You know, very project living as um, driven as well, which is fantastic. And uh, and Neve, you're on the same team as Harpreet. So is there anything else that you wanted to add to that, or has he done a sterling job? No, I think he has explained that um, perfectly. I just wanted to say as well because you mentioned um, the buddy scheme. Everyone yes, on our yeah. floor, anyway, everyone gets given a, a buddy when they start. Yeah. And I think that was um, in terms of like the first few weeks definitely the most helpful just in terms of like such little stuff like you said setting up your laptop setting up your computer like in terms of when you're doing projects where things are saved how to find them um managing emails stuff like that which was um is really good I think um yeah in terms of those training sessions as well like that we get they are they are great and they're very practical kind of um back to basics kind of stuff um because I think I also think that, you know, on the job learning is what you need. Like when you've done a master's degree in engineering, you've spent four years writing stuff down and, and learning stuff in preparation for maybe some job someday that's like very kind of abstract and seems very far in the future. So I think by the time I started, I was definitely ready to get down to it and do some actual work rather than like Harper was saying other tra- like grad schemes where you do two months training at the start or whatever. Um, I was very happy that um, that our our position was very hands on from the get go, really. And you can make a difference straight away, then, can't you? As well, you know, you can learn on the job, and then and then see what all exactly. you've learned in the last four years coming coming into practice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Aside from the training, Eve, are you involved, or do you know of any um, like networking groups and things like that that WSP offers? Yeah. So I would say, um, like, it's it's great for that, to be honest. So in yeah. our um, office we have something called the YMEP so we work in and um, building services which is lo- what mainly mechanical electrical public health so that's MEP and you have um YMEP which is so everyone in the office that's under 30 we have like a meeting um every month and then we have a social afterwards so that social aspect is um huge as well um so that's just for our floor and then the office as a whole um has a similar thing so you have there's loads of different social events to always be going to um I know that today there was like a women in engineering um kind of society club kind of um oh, launched yeah. um so they're starting that as well um yeah no there's lots of lots of opportunities for um kind of extracurricular I know there's WSP band in the office as well oh, okay. that. Yeah. yeah 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 sing off like they played at the Christmas party <laughs> oh, wow. um, yeah everything is 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 centered around work but people yeah. are also very um geared towards there's a good work-life balance I would say people yeah. are very much um catering for extracurricular as well and stuff like that oh, something for the over, the over 30s need and um there are loads there are loads getting a bit worried here <laughs> 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 Thanks very much, Steve. And um, Maria, I'm going to come on to you now. So any training development that's really you know shone through for you that you think, oh, I really enjoyed that part of my journey so far at WSP. Yeah, um, I had a course on micro drainage a couple of weeks ago. So it was a two day course and it was done over a virtual virtual computer, virtual desktop. So I like worked along um, it was like a live course, someone was teaching it and I used the software at the same time. Oh, and it's okay. a software that I hadn't used at uni. So I'd yeah. like never heard of it before. Um, but yeah, it was it was really fun, hands on. Um, and I'd be comfortable to use it in projects now. Yeah. So it was, so was that the aim then? Did you did you request that bit of training or was it given because you know your your managers knew know that you need to be using that in the future? Yeah, exactly. So my line manager yeah. thought it would be good for one of the team to be able to use micro drainage. So yeah. 
uh, yeah, I was put forward to do that. Um, yeah, so it'll be useful for the future, I guess. That person is you, Maria. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> the church you well done thank you maria uh, christian last but not least what what really strikes a chord with you about the training at wsp um yeah so i think similar to everyone else so far like you get training as soon as you arrive you have all these courses that you do which are really helpful but for me personally um there's me and two other grads who start at the same time same team in bridges and the head of bridges top dog right at the top um who works in manchester just pulled us aside for an hour pretty much every week and said, I'm gonna teach you this now, I'm gonna teach you this now. And oh, just said, I'm gonna, this is how this works, this is how this works. Um, this is how our overheads work, this is how the business operates, this is how to sort of put what we did in perspective. So instead of yes. having a tunnel vision and looking at, oh, you're gonna work on this bridge for the next two days and this is the information you need, it's like, well, why are we doing this bridge? What are we delivering? Yeah. What did network real, really need us to do? Why is it our responsibility? So it wasn't just how do you do your work, it was understanding why work was so important and what the business we offer as a company um to our clients basically and a step further was before i went to this vibe that just outside my office he got myself they were grads and the people who were probably a bit higher the associate engineers all into a room and said these are how arches work and you think oh it's pretty simple it's like it loads it all, all this stuff but it's like well how does a specific arch work where are all the defects where would, where would a crack be um how do you uh, do all the drainage and stuff so he had a very inter interactive um, conversation with us all, asking us back and forth, getting us to draw stuff and said, how does that work? Why does that work this way? Why is that design feature been put in? Or why mm -hmm. have they done this? And so getting us to sort of really question the work we do as opposed to just doing it and making us really sort of understand our role in the, in the company was sort of the, the standout thing to me um, since I've joined. I absolutely love that. You know, somebody who comes in and says, right, this is what an overhead is. This is how you run a business. Because then, you know, your team, your your team and your role within Bridges, Christian, you're thinking that, oh, but I know what overheads mean. So I know what cost implications are and everything else. And you kind of, you kind of almost self-employed out you with your own little business going ahead um, at WSP. So I think that's a really good thing to do. Um, and just to that, Carl, it's a good point to make because I think sometimes students that are thinking of applying to maybe a large organisation like WSP, yeah. They think, would I get that type of training? You know, am I going to be in an environment which I can't? I'm going to be working with the boss within, you know, our yeah. group. Um, and you think, am I going to get that exposure as well? And again, it just was something we were talking about when I was speaking to the students at Leeds. You know, that's something which I think large organisations, you know, students think, oh, am I just going to be that number? You know, but you're not. And that exposure that you get, the the training you get, um, to me, makes it just as good. Um, as working in a small organisation because you get that experience, which is a I think, massive bonus. I think what we've we've got over the years, Jess, Kerry, I can see you one sec, mother, um, what we've got with WSP over the years as well is, is that the, the graduates can almost feel comfortable in asking the whys. You know, it's all well and good that somebody says, oh, this is how you do it, but but why though, you know, why would it be important to do it this way? And I think it's two things. I think it's, you know, the, the, the managers there being prepared to, to do all this training, but I think it's the graduates feeling comfortable enough to ask the wise. Yeah. Kerry. Yeah, sorry. I was just, oh, I, was just I was just gonna add um that obviously the line managers are very, very carefully nominated and chosen yeah. to work with our graduates to to ensure that they are getting, you know, the learning that they need because we 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 learn by doing, don't we? Well, in oh, most cases. Um, and you know, there's so many great things uh, in WSP for early careers professionals to help them develop, get to that next level. Um, I mean, we've got something called called the Professional Growth Network, which I think is fantastic. It's made up of a lot of early careers professionals that have been through the chartership, and it's a fantastic support mechanism, especially you know, to to help graduates get through their chartership quicker. Um, and we have had some really good uh, stories where grads have got very few, but, you know, we've had a couple that have done it in three years, um, some four yeah. and five, but it is all to do with that support that they're getting and those experiences. So whilst we don't have a fixed rotation, if a graduate does need to get experience somewhere else, that's very much supported. Um, so I've seen some fantastic things here. Uh, we also have an at STEM WSP that's run by our graduates. So 
uh, graduates uh, apply for the position. They generally do it for a year, um, but they get two days out a week and they are literally the organization STEM ambassadors. So again, it's giving them something that they can control. They work with me, but they run off and do it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's, you know, it's doing something else outside of the job to attract more more people to the industry, which is very, very important for your chartership as well. So I think we've got some great systems uh, and support mechanisms here, especially for for graduates and apprentices. Yeah. And just stay with you then, Kerry. So what what other um, forms of support do you you give the students for when they're starting? So say, you you mentioned before you're going through the assessment centre process at the moment. So you give somebody a call tomorrow, you know, they've been successful. Do you keep in touch with them between now and them starting? or do you buddy them up with a graduate who's currently at WSP? What what do you do in those circumstances? Yeah, so so at the moment, Carla, we've got uh, a platform that we use, which is is brilliant, and it's yeah. set up uh, that so the line managers are interacting with it. So we encourage we strongly encourage line managers and teams from the start to start making those connections. So we we tend to wait until students have finished university because yeah. those last few months can be just full on getting your oh. dissertation, etc. Um, but you know, the, there's various points that line managers make connections and make send them information um we may share videos with them you know information that we know that that will be interesting to them but all to make all to also to make sure that they're feeling welcome ready to start with us as well and it may well be that you know the line managers suggest if they're doing anything virtually you know having a team meeting they may uh, you know just before graduate start um invite them to those you know it's just all about making sure that we're connected um and that people are are not just thinking about oh gosh I'm starting a new job in three months time making them feel welcome and part of the organization that they've not yet joined so yeah um, there will be other things that we do do with graduates once we're back to whatever the new normal world is (laughs) yeah Um, you know um, Leanne our graduate development uh, manager you know she's she's got some fantastic ideas um, of of, of things that we can do you know whilst we're waiting for graduates to start in September September um, and from next year we will also be moving to to intakes as well um, so it won't be such a long period you know we'll we'll split the intakes up but then maybe do something with them all together so there's lots of things that we're thinking of at the moment uh, but we do um, you know have have a really good onboarding process uh, for for all of our new hires yeah, I think it's really important as well. And, you know, students who are watching who are successful and do get a job at WSP, if you are and um, have those conversations by the platform that Kerry just mentioned, ask the hiring managers what you can fill your time with between now and um, September or, or, you know, for the summer um, placements, you know, ask them if there's any particular course that you could do. There's lots of online learning that could maybe um, set you apart from the other graduates who are starting um, in the autumn. So definitely make use of that. So thank you, Kerry. I am going to squeeze everything out of this webinar. I can possibly imagine because I'm loving it so I'm going to go through and talk about the futures of the grads I know it's so early I know you've only been there a couple of months apart from you Harpreet you are you are you are old school grad and um, so can we just go through everybody Marie I'm going to start with you so future plans anything that you're um, planning on doing or excited to be part of at the future um, at WSP uh, yeah chartership that's the plan for the next five years maybe yeah. sooner yeah, uh, chartership with the IC, and I've also joined the professional growth network, which we're talking about. Um, yeah, looking forward to running some socials, running some CPD events. Brilliant. Yeah. It's 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 like it's, yes. Yeah. Five years. Five <laughs> years. Well, shall we say four years? So four years four from years. now, Maria, <laughs> chief chief chartership, and we'll do another webinar with you. Say so, yeah, been there, done that. <laughs> well, good luck, Maria. Thank you very much. Um, Neve, future plans. Yeah, I hate to say the same, but it probably is. I think it's probably the the golden answer, really. I think um, before that, I hope to get my Eng Tech qualification, which is the one underneath chartership. So I think I'm hoping to get that in the next few months. Um, I've been told then you're on like a register of official engineers, so that's a good thing to go for first, and then yeah, then chartership is the next step, I think. 
does that work in a similar way then do you have to pass certain like modules yeah it's track? like uh you have when you get some it basically depends on like how many projects you're working on and how much you do in the but yeah it's basically a report you have to write um to present different competencies and then someone who is chartered has to sign off to say yes you have and then you send it off to um the relevant institution do you, do you actually have a chat fit buddy there then um need that you can go to um so i haven't decided who mine is yet but there's oh. <laughs> there is a system like a mentoring system yeah. which i think yeah then when i finish this the next stage is um chartership so you do in that case um have someone to talk you through it and stuff like that maybe you could interview your chartership buddies and select who you would like to yeah. help you i'd love that idea <laughs> jess you get the job for me um harpreet any future plans are you going to say the c word chartership um so first i was going to say um actually uh, were you saying about me being an old school grad actually i started at the same time as neve so i've only also been here a couple of months but um but yeah with about regards to the chart i've got that wrong <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> the, the chartership um actually i haven't really thought about chartership that much to be honest it hasn't been that pressing on my mind maybe it should be a bit more i don't know because um we've definitely been told about it a lot we've had whole long sessions and keep we've had regular q and a's about it where we're told um drop a drop in session if you have any questions about chartership so it's definitely something that is wsp like really tries to push you towards and encourage you to to um and then and, and they've and they and they'll fund it as well you can have one one chartership with any organization of your choice wsp will fund that for you um and but but actually rather than chartership i mean or well, not rather than chartership i want to work for chartership as well yeah. but what i've been think what i've been thinking about instead a lot is even within wsp because because chartership is something that's recognized across across the industry yeah. well, but, but even just within wsp there is a really big variety of different grades like for example we're we're um well me and neve are graduate engineers and then above that there's there's regular engineer and above that is senior engineer above that is principal engineer and then above that is associate and associate i think is the highest level where you're not in a director's role above that you have the various directors and there's there's, there's so many different ranks and it goes up high this this actually links to what um uh, what christian was saying i think about the head of bridges and um, talking to him because i remember when i first started uh, there was a colleague who used to talk to me quite a lot and at first i thought he was must be someone from the, P the ph team or something and then i asked someone and they said actually this person is the head of building services for the entire uk wow. in the same office as me and i was like yeah. wow <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. so th there's so many grades and there's yeah. and th everyone's under the same roof and i just find that i've i'm much more intrigued that a lot of people they got promoted from one grade up to the next one um yeah. just uh, the end of december and um i'm i'm really intrigued about sort of working my way up those grades maybe making up to associate level or associate director level or something like that in the I've, i'm guessing it will probably take at least five ten years or so but but i guess it, depending on how hard you work how many projects you get successfully sort of sent out it's that that the, that's sort of the pathway that i'm looking at I love that though. You know, you've got different ambitions as well as chartership. You know, you've got those ambitions as well. I remember a couple of years ago, Jess, when we went to Birmingham, we interviewed a couple of the principal engineers, didn't we? Which was really, really, really interesting. Perfect. Thank you, Harpy. Christian, did you have anything that you wanted to end on? Uh, yeah, I mean, Harpy is exactly what I wanted to say. Really, um, yeah. I think chartership is. I think three years. I think is very ambitious. I think four or five years if you're realistic, especially with a variety of work you need to like, achieve it. But to get the next step is just become an engineer past graduate level and, and to keep working up that level is, I think, the more short term immediate target. Yeah. But alongside that, instead of more titles, it's developing my skills as an engineer just within the company. So I've only been on a couple of site visits and I've got a lot more lined up um, as like the, our work expands, our work packages like grow and grow. So for me, it's like, oh, I want to go on, see a different kind of bridge. I want to do more yeah. nighttime inspections. I want to be able to go up and down the country and inspect these bridges. Um, and so I can come back and I can get my own site notes. I can create my reports myself from what I've looked at. So it's taking on more responsibility, probably in the more immediate future. So next two months, next three months, and like very, very soon. 
and then going past that is developing those the skill set from doing that additional work and variety of projects and structures that allows me to push past being a graduate and then push on to chartership afterwards. I think that's so important, isn't it? If you have your long-term goals, chartership, but then you you know your your short-term goals of doing exactly what you've just said. So perfect. Thank you very, very much for that, Christian. Kerry, before we we wrap up the webinar, is there anything else that you want to end on? Whether you're okay? I'm fine, thank you. <laughs> Well, that was short and sweet. You can tell she's not. Um, perfect. So thank you very much, everybody, for joining us today. It's been a pleasure to meet WSP. Good luck, everybody, for your futures. And don't forget what Kerry said at the beginning of the webinar. There's literally hundreds of opportunities at WSP that you can apply for. So get on their hub today and get your applications in. Um, also, don't forget this webinar will be live um, on the hub tomorrow and we'll break it down into bite-sized chunks, um, a, a lot of informative bite-sized chunks. So you're going to keep us very um, much at hard work tomorrow. So thank you very much for that. Me and Jess are taking a well-earned break next week, Jessica, out we love. So we will be back the week after, which is the 17th of February with Engineering Consult Consultancy Jacobs. So thanks very much, everybody, and we'll see you then. See you then. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.